think I burned a hole in my leg. So I think we finally hit the end of our first false spring in North Carolina. We were teased for like two weeks with sunny, warm, 65 to 75 degree days. And then yesterday I wake up and it's 33 degrees before I take my kids to school. This morning it's 29 degrees. It's 12.30 in the afternoon right now and it's still not even 45 degrees. What the heck, North Carolina? It happens every year. No matter what Puxatoni Phil tells us, he's a liar. We get teased with a little bit of warm weather and then it's freezing. And then a little bit of warm weather and then it's freezing. And then a little bit of warm weather and then everybody dies from allergies. I think I burned a hole in my leg. So I said in my last video, I'd show you guys how I shift my bike. If you're curious about why I have prosthetic legs, go ahead and watch the previous video. I'll include the link in the description below. Or you can click the link up top. When I first bought my bike, I was trying to figure out what the shifting situation was going to be. I wound up buying an electric shifter that was recommended on a bunch of different forums that I saw. I won't mention any names of companies and stuff like that. Because um, I have some pros and cons on them all and I don't want to disparage anyone's companies or, you know, whatever. The product is specifically marketed as not a handicap tool or like a handicap um, adaptive device. It's meant for something completely different. But in my opinion, I didn't see why it wouldn't work for me still. And so once I put it on the bike, it did work for me. It worked great for a little while. And then within a couple of months, I started to see some issues that caused some concern for me as far as like long-term reliability. And after a while, the shifter would be sluggish or it would miss shifts. Also, I noticed my battery would die really fast with this thing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> anyway, I noticed some issues with it that caused some concern for like long-term liability. And the thought started to creep into my head that what if I was a long ways from home and my shifter just completely like crapped the bed on me. And I had no like alternative way to shift the bike for myself. Well, after a long day of riding last summer, I suddenly lost the ability to shift the bike. Like the, the buttons, I had these two buttons over here to upshift and downshift. They completely stopped working on me and then my battery started to flicker on the bike. I was losing power here and there and so obviously it was more than a shifter issue. Something was going on with my bike uh, but the shifter completely died and, and I had no way to shift it and I was like 30 minutes from home. So luckily I had taken the toe shifter off the bike because my foot was accidentally hitting that shifter and downshifting on me in the middle of riding but I left the heel shifter in the event of an emergency where I could reach down and grab it with my hand just like I do on my dirt bikes. Luckily I had the heel shifter on there, I was able to reach down and, and get myself home. But I was like, man, this I've got to come up with a different way to shift. Well, the reason why my shifter went was because my entire charging system had, had crapped the bed. My stator and my regulator went, uh, so it destroyed my battery, and then it also overcharged or overpowered the control module for my electric shifter. And so when I got, finally got everything replaced on my bike and I got the bike back up and running, the shifter was completely dead. I couldn't use it. I could have replaced the control module and you run with that. But like I said, the seed of doubt had already been planted, so I had to come up with a different way. So when I was coming up with a different plan for shifting, I was working on something else with my bike one day. And I like to take my bike around the block and, and test all the work that I do to it whenever I do something or change something out on it. And I figured I could just limp the bike around for like a mile and shift with my left leg just to confirm the work that I had been doing in the shop. Well, that one mile ride wound up turning into like a two or a three hour ride because I realized I, I can shift with this leg. And once I figured that out, I was so freaking pumped. Because I was like, all right, now I don't have to rely on some other piece of technology. I can just ride the bike exactly how it was designed to be ridden and do it my own way. Yeah, get it, poodle. I'll hit this U-turn real quick and then I'll show you guys. So my left knee is a hydraulic on a hinge. I have no control over it. When I lift it up, it just swings back like that. But that works out good for me. When I want to upshift, I simply lift my thigh up and the foot swings back and it hits a dead stop. The foot won't come back any further. But where it lands, it just so happens to be sitting right above my heel shifter. And so what I do is I lift my foot up and it hovers above the heel shifter. 
and then I just clutch in, stomp down, and now I'm in second gear. And then I take my hand, if I'm done shifting, I grab my calf and I can put the foot back down to the floorboard. Now I'm in second gear, and then I just keep doing that until I'm in whatever gear that I want to cruise in. Right there. It's a pretty simple process. It takes a lot more work. I mean, it's not just moving my ankle to move my foot or my toes up and down to hit the pedal. But it gets the job done, and like I said, I don't have to rely on some other piece of technology that can potentially fail me. The more operations you have going on on your bike, the more opportunity there is to fail. I think we all, anyone who's added extra gear to their bike has found that out the hard way at some point. So now if I want to make a right hand turn up here to downshift, I now have to pick my foot up and put it over the toe shifter and let it hover. And then when I'm ready to downshift, I just clutch in, stomp down, and then I can lift my foot back up, place it on the floorboard, and I'm ready to go. I have no idea where I am right now. If I want to upshift, I lift my leg up, my foot drops back, hover it over the heel shifter, stomp down, and I just keep it there until I find whatever gear I want to ride in. And once I'm done shifting, put my hand down on my calf, put it on the floorboard, and then I can cruise. Do I look like a drummer when I'm up on the bike? Because all four limbs are moving around and doing a bunch of crazy stuff, yeah, sure. But drummers are always the coolest guys in the band, so. All right, I want to downshift, I pick my leg up, put my foot on the toe shifter, and then I can stop until I find the gear that I need. Then I'm good to go. Right to upshifting. Just like that. And now my right leg, I can use my right leg just like anyone else can use theirs. I just don't have the ankle mobility, but I just lift my entire leg up and then I can use my knee to hit the brake pedal. Stop down right there, no big deal. And that's it, shifting is as simple as that. It requires more work, like I said, but it gives me confidence. Now some of the downsides to it is if I'm traveling at a higher speed and I need to quickly downshift to use my engine brake, I really don't have that option because I have to take my hand completely off the clutch, which means I always make sure that I'm not trying to follow too closely, even if I'm riding in a group with a couple of buddies and I'm somewhere in the back or in the middle, I'll usually give a little bit more space between myself. The downside to that is cars do try and get in between you when you guys are riding in a group, so. But there are no excuses, because when you're on a bike, you have to be vigilant and you have to be ready to go at all times. I know some guys have said in the comments in my last video, why don't you switch to a handbrake for your rear brake up on your left hand and then figure out the clutch a different way. You know, there are tons of different options. There are tons of different ways that you can you know, fit your bike to suit your needs. Is this a long-term solution for myself? I'm not sure, I really don't know. On this bike right now, it's worked great. I've done a couple of over overnight trips on this bike and uh, I mean, I'm not any more tired, I don't think, than anyone else that shifts any other way. So maybe it is a long-term fix in this bike, I really don't know. But it works right now. Now that I do shift this way, I have to keep my leg unlocked. And so what I mean by that is, this leg is Bluetooth controlled. And so I can hook it up to my phone and I can set it from my phone into a bunch of different modes. One of the modes has the knee completely locked out or locked out at a certain angle so it won't bend anymore because like I said, I don't have control of this thing. And so when I was riding with the electric shifter, I would just lock it out and that was great because the leg didn't move, the, the wind didn't catch the shin and push my foot back and drag my leg off the floorboard like it tries to do sometimes now. Also, when I go to set my feet down on the pavement at a stoplight or a stop sign or whatever, I had the added security that that leg would not bend. Now that I have to keep my leg in a mode where it can bend and stuff like that, I do have to be careful of my leg bending or folding on me when I come to a complete stop and drop my left leg on the ground. And so yes, I have dropped the bike before, not in like dangerous areas, uh, it's usually when I, I'm messing around in my driveway and I forget. You can see right there, I just dropped my foot on the ground. I've held the, it's a 700 pound fat boy. I've held the entire bike up with my left leg, no problem. You just have to be very diligent and, and pay attention. So I said earlier, I shift my dirt bikes with my hands. I ride all my, I ride, I ride dirt bikes with my kids. And there's no heel toe shifting on that, it's all toe. And that's a lot more difficult for me. So I just reach down. I ride like a little Kawasaki 110, so it's not a big bike. I could just reach down and I 
I grab the uh, pedal with my foot, and that's no big deal. But I am currently in the process of trying to figure out different ways to shift. And so I bought a shovel head drivetrain a couple of months ago uh, for a chopper build that I'm doing. And my buddy went and found a, a frame for me that I'm going to use. And we'll pick this story up after I pick up my Jimmy Johns. See you guys in a minute. Thought someone took my bike for a second. Oof. Well, I picked up this Jimmy John's for my wife, and I didn't bring a backpack. So I think we're going Jimmy John's in the pocket. Pocket John. You got Papa John's, and you got Pocket John's. Boom. All right, so where were we? I was talking about the shovel head. So when I bought the shovel head, it was set up in a rigid frame already with a foot clutch and a jockey shift. So everything's set up for a jockey shift, and I want to keep it a jockey shift just because I think it's cool. But I'm not able to operate a foot clutch with my left leg. Like, not even... It just... It wouldn't be a smart idea. I'm sure I can make it work, but as far as enjoyment riding the bike, it would probably take all the enjoyment out of it for me. But I've got an idea. So they make something called an easy clutch, and there's a couple of different companies that have, like, their own versions of it. It's for, like, stunt riding and dirt bike riding and stuff, and it's a small clutch lever. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to try and fabricate my own jockey shift lever for that clutch. Attach the clutch on the shift lever, and so I'll just reach down with my hand, and I can both hit the clutch and shift with that same hand. We'll see how it works. I'm still a ways out before I can even get to that point with that build. Uh, I took that entire shovel head apart, and I'm just gonna rebuild the entire engine. Give me the beat, boys, and free my soul. You knew you were turning, bro. One of the other things I have to look out for when I'm shifting with my leg like this is having to come to a complete stop. While I'm in a higher gear. So you know how like, you, you can be cruising around in third gear or fourth gear around town and then suddenly you have to come to a stop. Well, like I said, I'm not able to quickly downshift and so I'll come to a complete stop, but I might still be sitting in third or fourth gear. And at that point, I'm not going to take off from a dead stop in one of those high gears and put a huge strain on my drivetrain. So if I have one of two options to fix it, I can either reach across with my right hand onto my leg and pick it up like that and put it on the shift pedal and downshift it and just stomp on it because I have to stay clutched in with my left hand. Or what I'll typically do is I'll reach across and I'll clutch in with my right hand and I'll reach down with my left hand, grab the shift pedal with my left hand and then put myself in the first gear. Again, nothing that I have set up is like ideal as far as how you typically ride a motorcycle. My entire life has been figured out the past 12 years. So, but yeah, that's kind of a down and dirty on how I shift my bike. If you guys have any questions on anything else I have set up or like any, any obstacles I've come across or any experiences that I've had, uh, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Uh, I see every one of the comments and I try to respond to every one of the comments that come in. I had a bunch of good feedback in that last video and I really appreciate it and I really appreciated it from you guys If there are any other videos that you want to see me put out Just let me know and uh, I'll see if I can do it for you guys But that's all I got for you guys today If you like what you saw go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't seen my previous videos Some of those videos might already answer some of the questions that you have for me So go ahead and check those out as well Until next time guys Peace